Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video we are going to take a look at the new plugin by Waves called the CLA, Chris Lord Algae, the Mix Hub plugin which you can see on the screen here. Now this is something that's a little new um, and also something that's kind of a, a little old in the respect that this is an SSL console emulation from Chris Lord Algae's actual personal console in his studio where they've modeled um, his um, channel strip and there's some additional features which we'll talk about. Um, so that's the that's the, the the kind of the new portion of the way they kind of did this plugin. Um, this is kind of uh, the first SSL update, if you will, of the plugin that they did. I think from the fourth. 4000 series, I don't know, 10 years ago, the the, the legendary Waves uh, SSL bundle, which comes with a channel strip and EQ, a couple of channel strips and an EQ. Um, and that's really cool. You've seen this on my channel before. This is the first time since then they've done an SSL console emulator or emulation and they did it with CLA and this is kind of cool. So I want to give you my first impressions. Now, this video is coming out a little bit late. There's already a bunch of videos on this when this thing dropped about a week or two ago and I've had the plug in and I really didn't get a chance to play with it and I started to play with it over the last couple of days and I just want to share my impressions of it uh, with you and because a lot of my students and followers have already asked me, when am I going to do a look at this? Should I get it? Is it worth getting? Blah, 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 blah. So I want to tell you about some of the things I like about the plugin and I want to tell you a few things that I don't like about the plugin. Um, and then at the end here, we'll talk about, you know, my two cents. Is it worth buying or not? So let's take a quick run at the plugin or look at the plugin and kind of check the layout. So now the way you use this plugin, first and foremost, and let's close this for a second, is the idea is to take this plugin and you want to put this on every track in your session as the first insert. If you look at my session here, you can see that I only have one plugin as an insert and that is the C. CLA Mix Hub, and this is a drum kit with a bass and a couple acoustic guitars, three or four electric guitars, a B3 organ, a piano, a Wurlitzer, a vocal, and f um, what is it? Three background vocals, okay? So just in the tracks alone, we have 28 instances of this on the mix. I also have one of the uh, um, instances on the master bus, and then I also have it on my busing system down here, drum bus, bass bus, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keys, lead vocals, background vocals. So what does that mean? That means I have 36 instances of the mix hub on this session. So the very first thing I wanted to check out, one of the questions that I'm, I know I'm gonna get asked is how is it from a CPU intensive? Is it real CPU intensive? Is it gonna drag down the computer? Okay, so um, at 36 instances of this, if I were to look at my, my performance monitor here in Studio One, um, you'll see it's running at right around 55 to 57, 58% spiking. Okay. Now the specs of my computer is a little bit, um, a little bit more heavy duty, maybe than the average computer in a home studio environment. I have a 2013 Mac pro, the little trash can. I have an eight core processor and I have 32 gigs of Ram. Okay. Now granted it's five year old technology. And if you bought like a new iMac or a new PC today, the Ram might be a little faster. The processing may be a little bit faster. Mine's I think a three gigahertz processor. So it's not the latest and greatest from a hardware point of view, but it's an overly specced computer, especially with the eight cores. So what does that mean? So that means if you're someone that's running, let's say like a, a laptop, a MacBook Pro or a, a Windows PC, and you're running like a quad core, maybe eight gigs of RAM, you know, are you going to be able to put 30, 40 instances of this plugin in your session? It's going to be tight. You'd have to try it. Every computer specs a little bit different, but I can tell you that it could, in fact, bog down the computer um, if you're putting that many instances of the plugin on. Okay, now, again, the way this is intended to be used is in that way. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can pick and choose how you want to set this up, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But if you really want to get the console, turn your DAW into an SSL console in the most authentic way, the way this plugin is intended is to go ahead and to put it on every single track okay so that's the that's just from a cpu intense keep that intensive keep that in mind that if you have a lower spec computer with not a lot of ram not a very fast processor limited amount of cores you're not going to be able to put 30 40 of these across your session okay you won't be able to do that okay so just keep that in mind now let's take a look at the plugin so the way this plugin kind of works 
as I said, you put it on every track in your system, in your in your session. We have two main views here. If we look over here in the top right hand corner, we have what's called this is the channel view, okay, which is the this is the actual channel that it's on, and in this case, it's on the main outputs, okay. And if I click this view called bucket view, this is where you're going to have, and this is what makes this plugin unique and somewhat powerful, is that now you can look at buckets of eight uh, channels at a time in each bucket, and we have eight buckets across the top here, as you can see. So eight times eight is what? 64. So you can have up to 64 channels in this one plugin and you can control every aspect of each individual channel with only one window of the plugin open. Okay. So that's what makes it cool. And every other video out there that looks at this plugin will show you that. So the way that I have this thing set up, if we look at our uh, bucket view and if we want to click back, we just click channel view and this will be the channel. So let's take a, a quick look at this from a channel view perspective, because they're all laid out the same way. So at the top here, we have our track name. Now, now, as you can see, this is none, and I left this for a reason. And I'll talk about one of the things right now that I don't like about the plugin or something that's just a little bit, a little bit extra prep time to set it up. When you put this across every track in your session, even though your tracks in the session are already named, like in, in, if I open up, uh, let's say, this vocal channel here, okay, you can see it's labeled Vox, V-O-X, but if I open up the Mix Hub, um, you can see I have you have to rename the track to lead vocal. It's gonna come up as a default as none. In other words, the plugin doesn't recognize the track name. Okay, and I'm not sure from a from a from a technical standpoint if that even could have been done. Maybe there's no way to really do that. So I'm not picking on the plugin. I'm just saying be aware that you have to go in and you should go in and you're gonna name every one of your tracks. So not only are you gonna name your tracks in your session, but then you're gonna go ahead and name the tracks and the individual instance of the plugin. Makes sense? So we know that we're looking at the lead vocal track here. If this comes up none, you're not always gonna be sure what you are really looking at as far as which instance of the plugin do you have open, okay? Unless you look at the very top here. So keep that in mind. Underneath that, we have our input side line and mic. We have this analog button, which is gonna add a little harmonic distortion and some non-linearities to the signal, which is really cool. Why else would you have an SSL desk, right? You have a noise button that'll add some hum and some hiss as well. Okay, we have a phase and uh, flip and then we have a 20 dB pad for the mic side. Um, we have our low cut and high cut filters here. Okay, over in the center here, we have our EQ module and we turn on, we could turn each one of these modules off by this little power button up here. So we could turn the input on and off here. Okay, you can see it's labeled input. Next to that, we have our EQ section and we can turn it on and off here. Okay, we have our high, uh, high frequencies. Um, here we can use a bell or a shelf. We have our high mids here in green. We have our low mids here in blue. We have our low frequencies in black. We also have a solo uh, f a frequency uh, that you can listen to here as well, which is a which is a cool feature, which is not part of the original Waves SSL channel strip. Next to that, we have our dynamics here. And once again, you can turn this on and off by just clicking this button here. And we have our compressor section up here. We have our attack, uh, fast attack, slow attack slider here, which is, uh, which is true to the console. We have our release time here. We have our ratio here and our threshold here. Now, what's really cool about this plugin, one of the things I do like, one of my points to talk about I like, I like the fact that they not only gave you the, the, the compressor, um, the model, the compressor in Chris Lord Algae's SSL, but they also modeled, if you click on type, the Bluey, the 1176, his favorite 1176 Blue Stripe. So you can pick between the SSL desk or the Blue Stripe, which is really cool. That's that's a cool thing. And they sound way different from each other, as they should. And so you have a different flavor of compressor right in the plugin, and you don't need to have a separate Blue Stripe compressor, whether it's by Waves or Universal Audio or whomever. That's a cool feature, and it lights up blue as you can see here when you turn on the blue E, okay? Underneath that, we have our gate section and expander section down here in green, all the same controls you'd see on the SSL plugin from the original uh, Waves plugin and the desk. Down here, again, what we have, which is cool, we have this compressor mix. We have a wet dry mix here, which you know, it's really cool for things like parallel compression. That's pretty cool. So I'm keeping everything on 100% comp um, compressed mix, but you can go ahead and you can dial that in um, with some of the dry signal, which is really neat. That's an additional feature, which is cool. Next to that, we have an insert here where you, where it says no insert, you can click on the plus button and you can insert any of the other Waves plugins that you may have in your system. Now it only does Waves plugins, as you can see. So I have a CLA3 AMI collection and here's the CLA 3A, which is really cool. And then I can click this down like this and now you'll see it says CLA 3A. 
And one of the other really cool features about this plugin, which is similar to the uh, Shep's Omni channel strip by Waves, which is a video on my YouTube channel if you wanna check that out, you can rearrange the order of the way the signal flows. So for example, if I wanted the Dynamics compressor before the EQ, I just left click and drag it, and there we go. If I want the insert, the CLA3A, before the EQ, I can just drag it, and there we go. Okay, so that's really cool. That's, that's a nice, whoops. That's a nice, uh, a nice feature as well. It's defaulted EQ Dynamics and then CLA3A. And then if I wanna just take this out, I think, how do I remove this? That I'm not really quite sure how I remove it. Do I right click? Oh yeah, remove plugin. Well, how about that? <laughs> no insert, okay. Next to this, we have the output sections. That's model, which is really cool. We have our metering here. We have input, the output. And then what I really like about this is they have the gain reduction. Now you already have a gain reduction meter right here near the gate. This little thing, we have these LEDs here and they light up as you turn, lower your threshold and this will start to uh, illuminate. But it's not as accurate as the meter here. The meter is really cool. I, I really enjoy being able to see the compression on the meter as opposed to here, because this just goes in three, uh, dB increments, 3 dB, 6 dB, 10 dB. So if you're compressing, say, 4 to 5 dB, you can see it more accurately on the meter than you can on the LED, the little LED meter, and it's a little easier to view, which is really, really cool. So those are the, so that's kind of the layout of the, cha of the uh, channel view, okay? Now, when we come over to our bucket view, this is where it gets a little interesting, and again, um, which makes this a little unique. So as I said, you have eight buckets, and you can have up to eight channels in each bucket, which gives you 64 tracks. Okay, so for example, over here in bucket number one, if I double click, is my drums. Um, and I have, I think, about 12 channels of drums. So in bucket one, I put my first eight channels, my kick in, kick out, snare, hats, tom one, tom two. And these names come from the channel view on each individual plugin when you put the name in here. So so for, so for as I said, when you put all 36 channels of this, all 36 instances of this across your tracks, you have to go in and name them all. So when you use bucket view, you know what you're looking at. Okay, makes sense? Okay, so here's our drums again, oops. And then you can double click in here and name the actual bucket, which I did, drums one. Okay, so those are our six, I have six buckets in this particular session, okay, two that are open that we're not using. Next to that, we have the way we can look at this. We have our input section, which is what we're looking at now. Okay, this is the same as looking at it at the channel view, but now we're looking at it in one window. We're looking at eight tracks all at once. If I click on EQ, we're looking at all eight EQs. If I'm looking at the dynamics, we're looking at all eight compressors and gates, and then the outputs, okay? Now on drums two, same thing. I have four or five tracks on drums two because I can only fit eight into each bucket. So I have uh, all my overheads, my rooms, and uh, a kind of a, what we call a geek mic, a room mic. And again, you can go input, EQ, dynamics, and outputs. So what makes this really cool is that instead of having what you're typically used to is starting off, let's say, with your kick drum, you have to open up your kick drum plugin EQ compress, gain stage your, e your kick in, then you go over, your, you close that window, go over to kick out, open up the kick out window, and you do all your adjustment and you keep closing and opening all your plugins on each individual track, you have a lot of opening and closing of windows. What's great about the Mix Hub is you could do it all in one, one window. You can just open up any one of the instances and you can go to your bucket view and you can look at your bucket view. So if I'm in my drums, I can work on all eight of my drums, the mixers, I can use the dynamics, the EQs, and the inputs without ever having to close this plugin window. That's what makes this thing unique and really cool and a lot more analog-like. If you were in a real studio sitting with Chris behind his SSL, that's kind of how you would work. And he works kind of in buckets of eight, and I'm sure that's why they picked eight as the buckets, because that's probably how Chris likes to work, where he's got eight channels in front of him, and he can touch all the, the inputs, he can touch all the EQs, he can touch all the compressors and gates, and he can then touch all the faders without ever having to open and close anything. That's pretty cool. Now, the way you assign things to a bucket, um, and we can do over here in bucket number seven because it's open, and I can just label this a test bucket, okay, just so you can see it. So you double click in there, you name your bucket, and then you click on the assign button, and you can go down here and you can assign what goes into that bucket. So let's say for this example, I'm just gonna put uh, whatever. Uh, out of all my tracks, I'll just say acoustic guitar one and acoustic guitar two, okay? And then I click 
up, click assign again, and you can see now acoustic guitar one and two are in my test bucket. There was my inputs, there's my EQs, there's my dynamics, and there is my outputs. Now to unassign those, I believe you just come in and you just say one, two, and unclick them, and now they're not assigned there anymore. Now I wanna make sure they're actually still assigned to my guitars bucket. I haven't tested this yet because that's where they originally were assigned. Can you assign them to more than one bucket? No, you cannot. So I, that's interesting. So when I move them to the, new, to the new bucket, it unassigns them from the old bucket. Totally fine, just so you know that. And you can see that they're unassigned because they're not colored, they're, not, they're grayed out. So if I go one, two, hit assign, and there we are, my acoustic guitars one and two are right back where they were before. Okay, so that is kind of how this plugin is kind of laid out and kind of works. Okay, so now one of the things that I know, one of the things that I did when I first started to play with this, and I'll close this for a second, is as you can see in my session, all of my faders in my DAW here, Studio One, are all set to Unity. Zero, well, this one's supposed to be zero dB. Okay, well, I think I thought I did this. I just maybe didn't click them all perfectly, but everything's at zero dB. So the way I set this up is I set all of my faders including the master at zero dB. And then I did all of my gain staging from the individual, uh, from the, or from the mix hub. Okay. Because these tracks were recorded quite a bit hot, you'll see on the input side, when I go to my bucket view, you can see all my drums here. You can see the input. You can meter this by in and out. So I can look at the input when, and I'll play this back here quickly in a second. You'll see the, the audio, the metering here on the input and you can monitor the output. So I was monitoring the input and I was lowering the, the line input because they were recorded too hot. And I was gain staging it inside of the plugin as opposed to gain staging it here with the faders and then not doing that in the plugin and just moving on to the next step. The, and let's play this back and you'll see what I mean. So here's some audio here and you'll see the input. Okay, so check out the uh, the snare, for example. When I switch it from input to output, you'll see the input is, is a lot lower and the output's a little bit higher. Because like I said, everything originally, when the faders were at zero dB in Studio One, everything was just about clipping. That's just the way this session was delivered to me. Okay, so again, watch the metering input. <laughs> Okay, so you say, okay, well, what's the big deal there? So what, it's input and output, okay? The reason why I'm showing you this is because what I found was, because I did the gain staging here inside of the plugin, now when I have all of my song mix, and if I wanna hear the accumulative effect of what this mix hub is doing to my entire mix, and I wanna bypass all the plugins, if I bypass all the inserts, what ends up happening, the track becomes way too loud and the volume has a big shift because all the faders in the DAW are set to unity. Therefore, because I had to turn everything down because the tracks were delivered to me too hot, that means I'm gonna have a much quieter um, on the, when I when I engage all the plugins as opposed to taking it away, makes sense? So that that's kind of, so you really don't get that A-B comparison. What I probably should have done is I should have gain staged it with the faders in Studio One prior to using the CLA mix hub and then not even worrying about turning down the input side, just working on my EQ compression and my outputs. And then when I did an A-B comparison, things would be a lot more level matched, if you know what I mean, okay? So that's what's really cool. Uh, uh, you know, that's one thing just to keep in mind. Okay, so now, so I'm not in this video. We're not gonna we're not gonna turn them all on, turn them all off because it's gonna be way too loud. It's gonna be unbalanced. I just wanted to share that with you. But I want to just now that I've kind of taken you through the plugin and showed you the way it's worked and the way it's laid out and some and what the benefits are. Let me tell you about again the three things that I like or dislike, and then the three or four things that I really like about it, and then we'll we'll wrap up this video. So the first thing that I that I don't like or something that um, that just to be aware of once again is when you put these on all of these are going to come up as default none and you have to go in and, and name individually all your mix hub plugins okay because if you don't name them when you go to bucket view you're not going to see them here and it's going to be more difficult to know what instance of the plugin you actually have 
open and where all your tracks are kind of laid out. Okay. Okay. So you have to, uh, you have to be able to, um, to not only do you have to name your session, obviously, but then you got to name the plugin. So again, it's a step you have to think about again. Could you set it up as a template, a blank template with all your things pre-named and then you drag your audio files in one at a time and line them up with your template. I suppose you could do that, but every session is going to be a little bit different. So you're going to have to do some customization for your particular session. So just be aware of that. One of the biggest things, the second thing I don't like about the plugin, at least I haven't found a way to figure, I don't see it anywhere on here, is there's no mute or solo button on this plugin. So the way this is intended to be and people will say, well, the way you're, it's intended to be done is so you're not, you're not, you're not soloing up individual tracks. You're doing everything in the context of the mix when you're doing your EQ and your compression moves. And that's true. And then the way I teach you guys how to, how to mix, most times we try to do that, but there are many times where you want to briefly solo something and you can't do that in the plugging. You have to now go down to the track that you're on and you got to solo it. Is it a big deal? No, it's not that big of a deal, but just be aware of that. So you may have to, if you have your plugin open here on the screen and let's Let's say you want to you want to mute the, the the overhead. You either have to close the plugin to 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 get to the overhead track so I can mute it, or I got to kind of drag it out of the way, mute it drag it back. Or if you have two screens, you could put one on one screen, one on the other. I do have two screens, but for you won't be able to see what I'm doing here in the, in the recording of this video if I don't keep everything on one screen. And a lot of you guys that are laptop users with a smaller real estate, you know, a 15 inch laptop, 13 inch laptop, that could become a little bit of a pain in the ass. Okay. Just be aware of it. It's not a showstopper. It's just something to be aware of. There is no mute and solo on here. At least I don't see it anywhere. I walked through the plugin three times. If someone knows a way to mute or solo this thing, please let me know. To solo up, not, not the plugin. I know you could bypass the plugin, but to solo up the track, you can't do that. Maybe because of the way this thing is designed, you know, and the way that it kind of works and all the, all the, you know, again, there's many tracks in the bucket view in one window. You can't really do that. I don't know. From a technology, from a technical standpoint, maybe that couldn't be done, but that's just something to be aware of. So that's the second thing that I'm not crazy about. And the third thing, as I kind of just alluded to, which is not a problem for me with my system, but could be a problem for you, is that if you're going to use this the way it's really kind of intended and drag it across 30, 40 tracks in your session or 25 tracks, depending on the specs of your computer, it could be a little bit of a CPU hog. It's not terrible, but it's is it more than the original Wave Channel Strip? Absolutely. Um, not that that's a big deal, but just be aware of that. So those are kind of the three things that I go, ah, uh, the, the, the mute solo thing is kind of one that's kind of a biggie for me. Um, but other than that, it's not too bad, okay? Now, what do I like about it? One of the things I love about it, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that you get the bluey compressor in this. That is cool as all hell because they do sound vastly different. And if you want certain elements of your mix to have a little bit different flavor from a compression point of view, a tonality difference, you could do it right here. You don't have to put in another plug in here on the insert. You don't have to own another blue stripe necessarily. That's pretty cool. That's one thing that I really like. Um, I love the fact that you also have the gain reduction meter here, as opposed to just using the little meter here, as you do on a typical SSL channel strip. That's really cool. And I found quite handy and I found myself using that more than I was looking at the little 3 dB thing uh, over here as I'm used to. So that's kind of cool. Um, I like the fact that you can insert another plug in here as we showed you with the LA3A a few minutes ago, but keep in mind it has to be a Waves plugin. Again, not a showstopper, but that's what it's intended for. But it's cool that again, in one plugin window, you can drop in another uh, additional plugin, you know, the, of Wave uh, brand. And that's kind of cool. Um, and what was the last one? Uh, oh, and I like the fact also that you can now, you can just drop, drag over and you can route the audio differently depending on how you drag the module. Where on the original SSL, if you wanted EQ before Dynamics, it was simply just a button that would just flip it internally. But this way you have to drag it, which again, is not a big deal. I kind of like that you kind of drag it as opposed to the button so you can really visually see which way you have your audio routed. So that is kind of cool as well. So overall, what do I think? Do I think this is sound and, and I know the next question is going to be how does it compare sound wise to the other waves channel strip or the universal audio channel strip or the plugin alliance uh, version of their SSL channel strip and I'll tell you this I own all of them and I've used them all and I've done a little bit of a B compare 
comparison. They all sound a little bit different from each other and they're going to. Why? Because every console sounded a little different. Every piece of hardware sounds a little bit different. The way they model the actual hardware could be slightly different and there's gonna be some slight differences in sound. They're not gonna sound exactly the same. Which which one sounds better? They're, that's such a, it's such a loaded question because again, they all sound a little bit different. I will tell you, obviously this has that SSL sound. It does, they did a good job modeling it. It sounds very similar to the thing that they did in the past in the Universal Audio one and the uh, Plugin Alliance one. They, um, it, it, they did a really good job modeling it. It obviously has that SSL flavor and vibe to it. Is it better than the other ones? Well, if you don't, if you have some of the other ones and you like the way they sound, do you need to have this? Excuse me, you don't need to have anything. I say that all the time. Um, what I, what's nice about some of the features is the addition to the bucket view where you can do everything inside of one plugin window where you don't have to close and open every single plugin on every single track is helpful. It is a little bit more to set up, as I said, with the naming of stuff. The other thing you wanna be aware of too is um, if you're working in the channel view, you wanna make sure you know what channel you actually have open, what instance of the plugin you have open because you like in this case it happens to be the kick in when you're in bucket view it really doesn't matter you can be eqing and and, and uh, doing stuff on the snare drum inside of the kick in plugin window that's what makes this really really cool however if you if you're working on the snare here and you're like you know this looks a little small here i want to go over to the channel view and i want to work on it here keep in mind that this is not the channel view is not the snare the channel view is the kick in so you got to make sure you don't get confused by that if you're going to work in bucket view and you want to say make the eq look a little bit larger you just come over to this little window here and click it and that's going to open it up a little bit it doesn't lay the whole channel out in front of you like channel view does however you know it's just you know whatever you're whatever you like whatever you want to kind of uh look at you know it really is up to you how the hell do you close this thing that's one thing i don't know how you how you close this thing once it's open i haven't figured that out yet this is the uh the channel uh geez i don't even know how the heck do you close that bucket view. How do I close that? There must be a way to do it. I'm sure there is. And you were probably all looking at me going, Oh, what a dummy you are. Uh, oh, right here. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> you close it back up there. Okay. So that's kind of cool. So this is cool. In fact, that it is different. It does give you more of that feel of working on a console. It is a little different at first. And it even may be a little bit frustrating if you're not used to working this way. And up until now in plug it format, you couldn't work this way. So even for me at first, I found myself struggling a little bit, just remembering where to click everything, keeping my eye on, on the ball as far as I'm, if I'm going to switch to channel view to make sure I know what channel I'm actually opening opening and how it, you know, I don't confuse that when I'm in bucket view. Um, but I've only used it on this one uh, little uh, session here and, I, and I, I'm still getting used to the layout, but I think it's really cool. And it is a cool idea. It is a very cool idea. Um, so in the end, do you have to have this? Well, it really depends. I bought it on sale when it first came out for, I think, $69. Is it worth $69 US? Absolutely. Especially if you don't have any other SSL plugin stuff and you want the SSL kind of vibe. This is a really good Good solution. If you already have the other ones, do you need to have this? Need? No, you don't need to have this unless you really dig the whole bucket view concept. Okay. If you dig the bucket view concept, this is really cool. If, uh, if that, it doesn't mean anything to you one way or the other, you just want to have the channel strip. Then I would say if you already have the old waves one, or you have the universal audio one and you don't want to spend 69, or I think it's probably a couple of hundred bucks at full price, or maybe a little bit more than that, then I would say you could probably pass on this. However, overall, it sounds good. I like it. It is a cool plugin. It is a great concept. I think they did a great job on it and I'm glad that I bought it. I'm gonna use it for a few more mixes and what I'll do the next video, the next time I will gain stage the project prior to putting the plugin on so we can do a true AB comparison because we can't do that right now. It'll, it'll, it won't mean anything. It'll just blast you out if I turn off these plugins because everything was recorded too hot. So I hope you found this video somewhat helpful and informative. It is a little different than the other videos you've seen on YouTube. I know everyone's just playing it and turning them on and off and a, a lot of the information is the same. But for my followers and my students who want to just get an unbiased opinion, they didn't send this to me. I didn't get this for free. You know, do I love it? Is it the greatest plugin in the world? No, it's a good SSL plugin. It's got some cool features and you can all, always go demo it for free on Wave's website and you could try it for yourself. And you might find if you're so used to working a certain way, 
away and you don't have big screen real estate or a second monitor, this could become a real pain when you're trying to uh, you know move things out of the way to not only mute and solo your tracks, but also too, if you want to get up to your edit screen, you're going to find that this plugin could always be in the way and you're constantly having to close it and open it anyhow. And so that might just be too much for you and you may just be like, you know what, I don't need this. <laughs> So it really depends on you. So anyway, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button below, leave in the comment section what you thought about this video and any other kinds of videos that you want me to show you. I'd be glad to do so. I have a lot of these plugins and, I, and we could do some more stuff on this. Also make sure you go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your five free mixing training courses. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And last but certainly not least, if you really wanna learn the craft of mixing or get better at the craft of mixing and you wanna join a like-minded group of folks that are learning how to get better at mixing, go check out mixingmadeeasy.net. Um, we use not only these plugins, but we use a lot more plugins. There's lots of great deals over there, mixingmadeeasy.net. Go check that out. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will see you in the very near future. Thanks so much and take care.